I publish an op-ed every every weekend uh, in newspapers in uh, uh, the district where I ran for Congress. Most of them are challenging to the uh, two to one Republican population of the of the congressional district. But often, when I can, I, I throw something in which is uh, not about the things that divide us. And I, I brought boiled down the sacred space of lovers to this piece I'm about to read. This past year, feeling depleted, even damaged from looking so long into our national heart of darkness, I wanted to turn to explore something good and whole, some part of our human lives worth celebrating. The celebratory project I found myself most inspired to pursue is one I call the sacred space of lovers. That is, the space that lovers can create to inhabit together. A space that ideally is one of open-hearted intimacy of body and soul, of romantic passion, of deep love and attachment. How much is there in life that brings greater fulfillment than experiencing to whatever degree one finds it possible to achieve it, that kind of space with one's beloved? In looking for something in our lives worth celebrating, one could, of course, have chosen other positive dimensions of our experience. One could choose the experience of giving and receiving kindness among people. But of course, in the ideal of the relationship of lovers, such kindness is a basic element of what is given and received. One could choose those moments in our lives when we are moved by beauty. Oh, wait, this is part of what can go into making the sacred space of lovers for lovers tend to perceive the beauty of their beloved and to have their hearts moved by that perceived beauty. In the words of the Rodgers and Hammerstein song, do I love you because you're beautiful or are you beautiful because I love you? One could choose to celebrate the value of honesty and authenticity in human interaction that solid foundation of people's connections being built upon truth and integrity. But this too, the cultivation of honesty and trust is part of the means by which lovers can create such a wonderful place of security in which to be intimate together. One could choose the dimension in human community where the spirit of fairness is honored. But fairness supports also achieving the ideal space that lovers can create, where each is inspired to make sure to do right by the other. That all these dimen different dimensions of the good come together in the sacred space of lovers tells us two things. First, it shows something basic about the nature of wholeness that the many components of the good tend to converge into something whole. I want to read that sentence again because I don't think that I fully grasp the fundamental spiritual truth that this points to, but I believe that it is true and that it points to something that's worth exploring. So I'll read it again. First, it shows something basic about the nature of wholeness, that the many components of the good tend to converge into something whole. There is on my website, the website called abetterhumanstory.org. If you put in the search box, Pathways. It'll take you to a piece called Our Pathways into, uh, into Deep Meaning or into the Experience of Deep Meaning. And 
there's a lot of about that in there as far as I've been able to take it. Also, in my integrative vision about the human story, which is really what I'm wanting to convey through this thing, really what drives me, I have, I identify a couple of forces in the, uh, that are contending over human destiny. Uh, a co two coherent forces that I feel I can show, uh, one of which consistently spreads a pattern of wholeness, and one of which consistently spreads a pattern of brokenness. And that idea of a pattern of brokenness and a pattern of wholeness relates to this thing. The fact that the sacred space of lovers can be fed by all these other dimensions that we can experience, uh, the sacred or the whole in our lives. The clue about something big. Well, I'll go on from for now. Getting back to this op-ed about the sacred space of lovers. That these all these different dimensions of the good come together tells us two things, I said the first. And the second, it helps to explain why it is that the sacred space of lovers is an especially rich source of human fulfillment. For it is an ideal comprised of diverse elements, each one of which we experience as being of great value. And I know a lot of people for whom the space they have created in their relationship with their beloved, though it, with its limits and its imperfections, is really core to their the, what they value in their lives. So turning to another dimension, which has got to do with what I regard as the essential lens through which we should look at our human story, which is the, uh, an evolutionary perspective. So. One might ask, why call that space of lovers sacred? The answer starts with the widely shared belief that, quote, life is sacred. Therefore, as our traditional religions have generally recognized, those things that sustain life partake of the sacred. The relationship of lovers, of course, is profoundly connected with life. For it is through that space that life survives into the future, being passed from one generation to another. But the space of lovers that best serves the, for the perpetuation of our kind, of humankind, involves a lot more than mere reproduction. That's because for us humans, the task of passing along life is about more than conceiving and bearing young. It is also about the formation of families so ordered to be able to nurture those young to grow up whole. For humans, it is a loving and stable family that best perpetuates life. And the space of lovers serves life and thus is sacred because the lovers can lay the foundation for such a family to the extent that they can embody the ideal of that space, whole in all those dimensions. Lovers ideally inhabit a space that's safe for intimacy and vulnerability which pretty well captures the inevitable circumstances into which the human infant is born. Lovers supporting, support each other in being their best selves, which is also the task of parents in raising children best able to flourish in their world. And lovers experience together the feeling that life is good. And our feeling and attachment to life makes not only for happiness, 
but for survival as well. The more that lovers can realize together, and you know, this is an ideal, uh, we all get there only so much, so much of the time. The more that lovers can realize together the ideal of that sacred space, the more they can provide a template around which children can grow up to be whole with the strength and soundness conducive to navigating life's challenges well. And the more they can carry in their own hearts the ability, that is the children can carry within their own hearts the ability when they are grown up to establish a lover's relationship that will provide the same for their children, the children of their own. This ideal space of lovers is sacred then because life is sacred and because the space of lovers in all its dimensions is at the heart of how our human form of life has perpetuated itself. And we experience that wholeness as sacred because our nature has been crafted to find fulfillment and beauty along those paths that have best served the life of our kind. I want to repeat that line again because that also points to something which is big and I've talked about in various ways about how evolution crafts within us experiential tendencies uh, that are there because they have proved life-serving. They wouldn't be there if it hadn't been that those ancestors that were drawn in that direction were better able to get their DNA into the future than those that did not have those experiential tendencies. And in this case, we're talking about the experiential tendency to feel deep fulfillment. The more that we can achieve the sacred space of lovers with our beloved. So I'll repeat that sentence. And we experience that wholeness as sacred because our nature has been crafted to find fulfillment and beauty along those paths that have best served the life of our kind. You can see how useful the evolutionary perspective is and seeing what's in us and why. It is one of life's richest experiences when as lovers we can bring together kindness and pleasure, integrity and beauty, body and soul, an experience with the potential to open us to a depth that enables us both to perceive and to feel the sacred at the heart of our lives. Uh, in my list of topics, uh, maybe I should uh, bring up that list, but anyway, the, uh, the last topic, if we get to it, um, is uh, the reality of the sacred. And I'm using this word, and, and I am expecting that a lot of people uh, of a religious point of view uh, are probably wondering, well, how is he seeing this? He doesn't sound like he's working in our religious perspective. And, and I, um, yes and no. Um, and, and people, of a, but mostly uh, people of a secular point of view might think that I'm using a word which really doesn't refer to anything. And um, the evolutionary perspective uh, refutes that way of dismissing. The, uh, I, I think I can show that um, that there is a dimension that's important and that's real and that uh, has been put by evolution into our experiential repertoire and that rightfully should be considered uh, a, the sacred, which correlates in meaningful ways with uh, what is life serving. If, if we get there, uh, I'll be happy to lay that out. Uh, if I don't get there, uh, please go to uh, betterhumanstory.org and uh, just do a little searching about uh, uh, spiritual dimension and you'll see 
the case is made, and I think the case holds water.